Welcome back to The Breakdown. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at how we produce power in the United States. And when I say how we produce, I mean, where does it come from? Solar, nuclear, coal, natural gas, and more. And the reason this popped up in my attention recently was the recent backlash against Bitcoin mining. Now, Bitcoin mining is very power intensive. You have big computers running mathematical formulas to produce Bitcoin as a reward. Now, the problem with that is the way they're being powered is from some very non-green energy sources. For all the talk of green energy and more, a lot of the power supply in the United States is, doesn't come from green sources. So we're gonna be taking a look at where we get our power, who actually uses the most amount of power, and more, because Tesla has announced that they're gonna stop accepting Bitcoin until it can be mined in a more friendly environmental way. So let's take a look at that and see how true or how accurate they are how true that statement is, and who's really using all that power. First though, if you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, it really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. Hopefully we can help you learn something new about the world around you. All right, so in 2021, where does our power in the United States come from? And how is it being used? So according to the numbers I found, over 40% of all power produced in the United States comes from natural gas. Yes, natural gas is now the number one way we um, power our power plants out there. They, it burns, creates heat, energy, and more, and that's how we use it. And I'm also not gonna exactly explain how these power plants work. There's other great videos for that, so I'm gonna kinda of throw some stuff on here, and I know there's people who always leave comments, well, Luke, that's not exactly how it works. I do understand. Just a little oversimplification. The second most common power source is nuclear, and there's actually a big push to expand that right now, but for the recent history, it's actually been shrinking. Coal is the third most popular way to get power at 19%, so nu nuclear and coal are both over 19%. Now, that means put together roughly 80% rounding off, because coal's at 19.3, winds, or uh, Nuclear is at 19.7 and natural gas is at 40.3. That means about 80% of our power comes from those three sources. So when you plug in your wall, there's an 80% chance in the United States that you're getting natural gas power, nuclear power, or coal power. After that, it starts dropping off very dramatically with wind counting for 8.4%. So that's the fourth most popular source of power in the United States. Hydro, uh, hydropower, so those big dams where water runs through, tur turns turbines and more, is at 7.3%, and solar is at 2.3%. Now there's a few others, biomass, which is burning uh, biological material, 1.4%, and uh, petroleum and geothermal both come in at 0.4% each. There is a little bit of other, some random other power sources out there still, and more. But when you look at that, you can kind of understand the complaint here. 80% of the power comes from nuclear, natural gas, or coal. And of that, about 50 of the 80%, 50% of it comes from either coal or uh, over 50% of it comes from coal or uh, natural gas, which requires it to be burned. Now there are improvements from the coal plants of my youth even, but they're still not necessarily the most green efficient ways out there. But, the United States needs a lot more power. As we bring in more and more green power, our power demand is going up. And actually things like Tesla are reported to dramatically increase the power demand. So how are we actually using it? As we switch over to more electric things from gasoline and more, well, 34.74% of, uh, of all power consumed in the United States comes from residential homes, apartment complexes, and the like. Commercials like office building, retail, and more accounts for 32.72%. So residential actually is one of the biggest areas that consumes power. Industrial, so the actual manufacturing of materials and goods, accounts for 23.7%. Transportation, so high speed rails and all that kind of stuff, 0.18%. Now I kind of try to figure something out with that number that I wasn't able to, somebody tells me, when it looks at power consumption, how do airports fall into that very big consumer of power? But I'm guessing from looking at it, it falls into the commercial retail side, not necessarily the other, because they're not really counting the planes. And then uh, transport or uh, transportation, which is the um, all that kind of stuff. System loss. Now this is an interesting one that's actually going down. 
it's 8.6%. So system loss comes from inefficient means of transportation, the power, transporting the power. That could be um, power bleeding off in lines in different areas. But 8.6% of that is loss. Now that number is down and going down as we get more efficient ways to transport power along wires and more to your home. But if we're able to cut that 8% down even further, that's a huge savings right there. Something that we're not really talking a lot about. Now the interesting thing is they project that over the next 10 years, residential power is going to dramatically increase. Now you're probably saying, Luke, while well, homes are built more energy efficient, and they are. I'm no longer using fluorescent light bulbs or that kind of stuff. I got LEDs in my home. I'm sitting here with LED lights right in front of me. Use a fraction of the power. And one of the busy, biggest expenses of buying this new home in our remodel was replacing all the light bulbs to LED powered light bulbs. My car now has LED. We put a new energy efficient furnace in when we bought the house and more. Problem comes with we're using more and more electronic devices. Whether it be my smartphone, computers, TVs, bigger TVs using more power, and electric vehicles. Yes, as we get everything from lawnmowers to uh, uh, leaf blowers and electric cars in homes, the amount of power being consumed is going up in residential. That trend is expected to continue. Now, the question is how much? There's a lot of improvements coming to electric cars, graphene batteries, and more the way how much power is needed, it'll be interesting. But our power demands are going up. How will that uh, be countered? Well, it's being reported that most new power plants being built in 2021 will be green energy. It's going to definitely be a race though. As we try to our best to um, deal with this huge demand and we try to get off of so-called non-green energies like coal, nuclear, and natural gas, we're dealing with the fact that more and more demand. So as we build new power plants, are we able to take the old ones offline and still be able to meet the demand? That's gonna be what really has a big part of it. Now I do think as time goes on, as we continue to, like I did with my home, retrofit it with LEDs, put in more energy efficient uh, furnaces and more, I think that will help. The growing trend of solar roofs, I'm actually looking at that when our roof needs to be replaced. I think I'm gonna wait, cause it's very expensive right now. But solar um, shingles, you know, solar panels on roofs that look like regular old shingles, but are really solar panels. Could we dramatically cut down our residential power use doing that? Unfortunately, I don't think a lot of people, if you have a 4,000 square foot house, a 3,000 square foot house, you could be looking at 40, 50, 60,000 dollars in bills for that, depending on what kind of roof and more you have. So I think a lot of people need that price to come down before that will happen. It'll be interesting to see, but let me know. Does it surprise you at all that 80% of our power in the United States still comes from coal, um, natural gas, and nuclear, with 40% of our power overall coming from natural gas? Did that surprise you? Did it surprise you that wind is now the third, or excuse me, fourth most popular source of power out there at 8%? Does it surprise you at all that solar is only 2.3% of the power generated for our homes and our businesses and the country as a whole? I'd love to hear from you. So there you go, there are the details, there are the information. I'd love to hear more from you. If you would like to leave me a comment, let me know what you think about the future of our power supply. Does it bother you the way we get our power? I'd love to hear from you. So if you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. Thanks for your support, I really appreciate it. I hope everyone has a great day. We'll be back with another video real soon.